A very good morning or afternoon to you, wherever you happen to be. Thanks so much for joining us today for a really interesting and informative conversation. My name is Sandy Elson, and on behalf of the Travel Professional Community and HomeBasedTravelAgent.com, I want to welcome all of you and thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. We are really happy to have as our host today Starwood Hotels and Resorts worldwide. Our speaker is Chris Austin, Vice President, Global Leisure, Luxury, and TMC Sales, and a member of Starwood Sales Organization's Senior Leadership Team. Chris is responsible for developing and executing the global strategy and sales for leisure, luxury, partnership, airline, and TMC channels valued at over $2.6 billion in managed account revenues. Chris is laser focused on ensuring Starwood is easy to do business with and has developed a number of core programs, including Starnet, SPG Pro Learning, and Luxury Privileges. Chris started his career with Starwood in 1986 at the Sheridan Skyline Hotel in the UK as sales executive. Since then, he has held a number of property-based positions in food and beverage, bank banqueting, banqueting and catering before returning back into sales. Chris was relocated to the U.S. to lead leisure sales and seven years ago was tasked to create a global luxury sales strategy in support of Starwood's growing luxury brand portfolio. Earlier this year, Chris was awarded Most Innovative Hotel Executive by U.S. Travel Professionals, and we certainly congratulate him on that. A British national, he lives in Miami with his partner, Alex. Our webinar's focus today is the Starwood Advantage, a conversation with Chris Austin. This webinar will be a little bit different than our usual webinars. As the title suggests, Chris will be having a, ver a conversation with our very own Joni Ogg, co-owner of the Travel Professional Community and HomeBasedTravelAgent.com. Joni and Chris will be discussing the latest updates on Starwood Hotels and Resorts. Before we get started, please remember that you are all muted, but I know you have a lot of questions for Chris. Many or most of your questions will be answered during Chris's conversation with Joni. At the end of the presentation, we will get to as many questions as we can. Also, Chris is very generously giving away several valuable prizes at the end of the presentation. So stick around to get more details about that. And here's a hint, you may want to take notes. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to Joni Ogg so she can get started with the conversation. Welcome, Joni and Chris. Thank you, Sandy. Hi. Chris, hi. It's so great to have you this morning, or morning for me, afternoon for some of you. This is going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, we've not done anything quite like this before, and I'm really honored to be able to, to do this with my friend and colleague, Chris. Um, Chris, I'm going to go ahead and just get started because I know you've got lots of information to share today, but I, we do thank you so much for being here. So, Chris, you're synonymous with the Starwood name. So give our attendees just a glimpse into how long you have been a part of the organization and how long you've been involved in the travel agency segment. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you, uh, Joni, for uh, giving me the privilege of actually being able to uh, participate today. Um, and I'd actually like to thank all of our listeners for the past, current, and future support that uh, you do lend to uh, Starwood Hotels and Resorts. It's uh, exceedingly appreciated, especially at this time. So I think, uh, Sandy, you did a great job actually reading my bio, which uh, gave a few of my secrets away. Here's a slide. Uh, obviously, the, 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 uh, the accent is English, yes. Um, I went to university in, in, uh, in the UK, and actually I think uh, another uh, great name in the travel industry uh, was um, also at the same university, in fact, Andy Stewart at NCL. So. Uh, there's one of my little uh, secrets that I've just shared with you all as well. And yes, my career began at the Sheraton Skyline Hotel in, uh, in London, England. Um, I was moved to the US, actually. Uh, at that time, it was ITD Sheraton, of course. And I was moved to the US as uh, Director of Leisure Sales um, and uh, moved through the organization to uh, my current role, uh, leading globally uh, leisure luxury and uh, TMC, travel management sales. Miami is my home, uh, and my partner and I, we love to go skiing at least once a year. We have two puppies, then they look adorable, and, uh, well, you can't meet a Brit that surely doesn't love a James Bond film, so uh, hence why Daniel Craig is uh, on the slide there. 
But I think, you know, one of the things, uh, Joni, that I try to do is really be a champion and an advocate for the travel professional community, um, really ever since the uh, assuming the sort of leadership for leisure, luxury and TMC sales, which is now about eight years ago, actually. And when I say I'm an advocate for the travel professional community, that's inside of Starwood as well as outside of Starwood. Um, in fact, one of the things I think I'm quite proud of is I changed the language even inside our own company. And I noticed that uh, when we started to articulate that uh, calling our, our travel partners travel professionals and not just travel agents, I think uh, we started to find a few of our competitors following suit, which is always, uh, I guess, indicative, indicative that you've made, a, made, a, made the right decision. Um, I, uh, in that advocacy capacity, I've supported ASTA significantly and, of course, ACTA in Canada and uh, CLEAR, the Cruise Line International Association as well. We've championed you know, centralized commission payment solutions, um, accepting all of the travel industry credentials. So regardless of what credential our listeners have today, Starwood recognizes all of them something that actually a number of our competitors do not do. So uh, as, a, as, a, as a slogan set states, choose your partners wisely and uh, make sure, of course, you are earning all your uh, compensation that you certainly, uh, you certainly should be. So, you know, one thing I, I think over the, my career journey we've, uh, at Starwood, our senior leadership team clearly understands the value that the travel professional brings. Uh, we're obviously focused, as uh, Sandy said at the, at the beginning, you know, on being an easy company to do business with and really building trust um, and a commitment to just do the right thing each and uh, every day uh, for, uh, for the travel uh, professional community. Um, and, um, you know, the, the other point is we try to have fun at Starwood as well. And I think uh, the uh, travel industry segment and leisure and luxury TMC sales, it's, it's, it's uh, great fun. And um, I like to call many of you my friends. I know many of you. And uh, again, it's uh, for me, I'm, I'm very proud to be in the position that, uh, that I have at Starwood, Joni. Well, Chris, you are a great friend and you have been an amazing friend and continue to be for travel agents, travel professionals. I, uh, I know everybody here that's on this call and anyone that will in the future listen to this recording um, wants to thank you themselves for everything that you've done. I, I know how much you do. I watch what you do. So you know, I thank you. You know, there's a lot going on out there, uh, of course, in the press. Um, and so we probably should talk a little bit about the current Starwood Marriott deal, if you're willing to do so. And I'm sure you don't have all the answers right now. But can you give the audience just a brief update on what they can expect short and long term? Absolutely, Joni. Yes. And um, I think you, I think you just summed that, uh, summed that up perfectly. I can, I'll tell you everything I do know, actually. Um, we don't have all the answers now. And I'm sure that um, all of our listeners um, and, and, of course, many of our own associates would love to have a lot more answers. Uh, but the, the companies are working, you know, fast and furious. And, of course, um, when, when the, uh, the answers are available, you know, we're committed to be sharing those. But I think it's, 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 uh, it's true, isn't it, that um, Starwood's been in the headlines on a daily basis. And, and for sure, it's a story you could not have written if you'd have tried, actually, the back and forth nature of the bidding process that took place over the last month, you know, the last uh, four to six weeks is perhaps more drama than the travel industry is certainly used to on a, on a, on a daily basis. So um, those of you who know me actually know that I love to use analogies quite a lot. And I was reflecting, Joni, on the past month or so and thought of an analogy of a tennis match. So I'm going to go back in time a little bit. And, and some of you may have been, of course, you know, watching very closely the, uh, the uh, you know, the strategic alternatives, as we called it in Starwood, you know, which, which actually dialed the clock back, went back to February last year. So in my tennis analogy, in November last year, Marriott were at 40-30. They had beaten out uh, Company H and Company I for Starwood and obviously felt in a very, very strong uh, position. Then, though, about six weeks ago, um, it became advantage to a consortium of companies led by Angbang. And then about two weeks ago, it clearly became game, set and match to Marriott. When our CEO, Tom Mangus, actually received word and somewhat surprisingly 
that the consortium led by Anbang uh, had actually withdrawn their bid for Starwood, citing market considerations as their reason for withdrawal. Of course, nobody may, we may never know what their true reasons were. Uh, the, the, there was certainly no speculation on our behalf, but um, it left, uh, obviously, Marriott back in um, the very strong position of uh, being able to merge, acquire, and merge our, our companies together. So, you know, the bidding war over that uh, six weeks period played out in real time, and it was actually watched only by, I think, the entire world. Uh, certainly, Wall Street were all over it. Investors Absolutely. were all over it. Yeah. Our competitors, I think, were watching very, very closely. Um, of course, our own associates were. And I know all of our listeners, all of our customers uh, here in North America, around the world, were watching this play out. You know, net, net, the process was very positive actually, because the value of Starwood actually increased 15.4%, which uh, you know is obviously uh, obviously terrific. Now, Starwood currently has 10 brands, and um, we're going to, after we've merged actually, the company will move to offer guests and customers 1.1 million rooms and 30 brands. And actually, you know, Marriott have already said, actually, that they're going to really in the short term, really keep focus on maintaining all of our brands. But, you know, there may be some lending of brands further down the line. But, you know, these 30 brands will deliver the most powerful loyalty program in the travel industry. They'll present the largest and unrivaled luxury brand portfolio. And quite frankly, they'll create countless opportunities for our customers and, of course, all of your clients that you uh, you currently send to our, our hotels. I think, Joni, you know, what I can share as well is that personally, and I know my feelings are felt by a number of other, well, perhaps all the Star Wars associates, the bidding war that we experienced, we believe, was clearly a testament to the company that we've built. The innovation that we've led with and the sheer passion and commitment we extend to each um, and every day to simply just doing the right thing for our customers around the world. Now, again, many of you may have been following this. So on last Friday, the 8th, our shareholders of both companies approved the merger. Um, and we look forward to creating the world's biggest and best hotel company with uh, 5,500 hotels in 100 countries. And um, our teams will continue to work. We are starting integration meetings. Um, in fact, I'll be in meetings next week, so we're certainly not pausing. Um, a couple of countries still have to, of course, uh, approve the, uh, the acquisition, including the uh, many EEC countries and, of course, China. But uh, there's a high, uh, high um, confidence that uh, everything will go through and the merging of the companies will um, take place in the, the middle of this year, actually, in the summer. So, you know, as, we have, as I said earlier, as we have more news, we'll share and we'll communicate. Um, and certainly, you know, don't hesitate to, to reach out and ask uh, us any questions. I'm sure the trades will be reporting this story uh, well into the, the back end of the year as well, Joni. So, um, lots of exciting things going on. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I do want to say for all of our listeners, um, I think that, you know, there's, a, there's, there's some questions, obviously, that many of our listeners uh, do have, questions we just can't answer now. But I actually would urge everybody to look at, you know, um, this is an exciting time in the hospitality industry. Um, I, I guess, personally, I always see, you know, my glass is always half full. And I fa I'm a fairly positive, uh, well, I think I'm a very positive person, actually. And, and I think it's a time for everybody to be positive and, and just think, you know, what this could bring. Um, the strength of a company such as this with over a thousand, you know, uh, a million plus rooms and, and 5,000 uh, uh, hotels around the world. It's a tremendous opportunity that um, we hope, uh, you know, in the future to leverage. Wow. Amazing. I, I, I'm just staggered at, at when you talk about the numbers, this is just absolutely unbelievable. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's any more points on that that you kind of want to address. Anything else that you want to share? And otherwise, we'll go into a, maybe another question. Well, I, I, Joni, I think I will just say that, you know, for Starwoods, customers are, you know, at the, at the center of everything we do. And I think, you know, we're, we're here for our customers. We're here for all of the listeners today on the on the call. 
and um, you know many many have expressed concern about what the merger might uh, mean in that uh, you know for our own teams and it could uh, you know how would it affect the strong relationships that we've worked so hard to build over the years well I'm actually delighted to say that uh, Marriott have announced that um, there would be very few if any changes at the property level in 2016 and actually all of our above Global sellers and divisional sellers will also be retained for the full year 2016. So basically, no change in the sales organization across both organizations for the full year. And I think, That's great. Uh, you know, we're, yeah, we're thrilled about that because, you know, we do have strong relationships with many, many of our customers. And of course, we do know, despite we're meeting next week, um, and, and meetings will continue every week, you know, that it's, uh, it's going to take time to merge these companies. And so we want to ensure that quite frankly, you know, we say it's business as usual at our hotels, but of course we're not, uh, we're not naive. It's probably business very much as unusual uh, for Starwood, but we are incredibly committed to delivering, you know, service excellence, the, the flexibility that our customers have come to know us for. And of course, they'll see no changes in SPG Pro or our Pro Learning offer, offerings um, or any of the partnerships. You know, we, we'll continue to support all of the uh, consortia partners, whether it's virtuoso, signature travel leaders, and of course the industry trade associations. You know, I mentioned I, you know, I serve on Asta's uh, board. I'll continue to, to, to be doing that. Um, you know, meeting with ACTA and again, clear. You know, to really again be the advocate for the travel professional. Um, and as we work to bring the best of Starwood and the best of Merit together, you know, the the future of all the programs I've mentioned. You know, Starwood uh, SPG Pro you know, uh, uh, our pro learning offerings, et cetera, they will continue as well. Um, and uh, so so I think at Starwood, you know, business as usual certainly doesn't equal average. You know, we come to work each and every day to excel and, as I said, to do the right thing for our, our customers. Um, and the brands, of course, I've mentioned earlier, the brands will all stay um, initially, and we're very, very excited about that. And I think we all know uh, Marriott's very um, interested, you know, they're, they're very motivated about buying Starwood because of some of our, our brands. Um, and of course, we'll have the, the largest uh, portfolio of luxury hotels. You know, I lead luxury sales for Starwood, so luxury is very uh, close to my heart. And, you know, they have clearly said that there is no intention to uh, change anything about St. Regis, the luxury collection. Um, and W Hotels, um, which are our three uh, luxury brands, and of course constitute the largest luxury portfolio currently in the world. So business as usual, we're here to continue to support all our customers, and we will communicate um, with everybody as soon as we do have answers, Joni. Wow, you certainly shared a lot of uh, really pertinent information. I know a lot of questions that people may have had have just been answered, and for your uh honesty and your willingness to share all this today. It means a great deal, I know, to everybody here on the call as well as to me. Um, you know, I, a lot of people ask questions, have asked some questions while this is going on here um, about the Pro Learning and SPG Pro. So I wonder, could you give us a little update on what's going on with that program? It's an amazing pro program and I know agents just love it. So maybe is there anything new going on there? Yeah, no, thank you very much, Joni. And um you know, we feel the enthusiasm of all of our customers actually all around the world, you know, with SPG uh, Pro and Pro Learning. And right now, actually, to answer that very question, we have a very rich offer in market for our SPG Pros, where for every three eligible bookings, a travel pro can earn a bonus 1,500 star points and actually up to 15,000 bonus star points. So that's in addition to all the regular star points earned for each eligible booking. Now, this would be for client stays actually through to the end of uh, June. The promotion started in the middle of March, but this is through to June the 30th, 2016. And of course, is at all of our 1,300 hotels and resorts around the world. So there's plenty of time for all of our listeners today to take advantage of this offer. And those, of course, who are not signed up yet, then I'd encourage you to all go to spg.com forward slash pro benefits, P R O benefits, all as one word there. Um, also, Pro Learning, you asked the question about Pro Learning, Joni. So Pro Learning is, of course, our multimedia training library. It's available exclusively to our SPG pros, 
and accessible upon logging in back into the SPG Pro account and clicking on the Pro Learning uh, section, uh, which is listed under the About SPG. We have now 25 destination training modules, um, which really are very global, covering North America, Canada, uh, Caribbean, Latin America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. And actually last year, the tail end of last year, we added four new destination immersions, uh, which were focused on Colombia, Peru, two China modules, which actually focus on the Golden Triangle, and China's natural wonders as well. So uh, all these new destination modules offer great destination content, uh, whether it's you know information about how to get their transportation, etc. They go into a deep dive about the properties, of course, in the uh, in the location that um, the module is focused on, and they actually teach the art of story selling. So you know, the the uh, many of you may have actually taken these these courses already, and thank you very much if you have. You you can actually build your own story as you go through. And a nice little tip here: you can cut and paste that then into an email. So let's just say you've done the uh, training on Greece. You could actually write an email to one of your clients and say, I've just spent 30 to 45 minutes learning about Greece, and this is why I think you should actually go uh, to Greece this summer on your holiday and uh, on your vacation. And you just cut and paste the story that you've built into your email and basically finish it off by saying, give me a call and let me book your trip. And you've turned that 45 minutes of learning into a great marketing opportunity to drive uh, future business back to your company. And I think, you know, Starwood's always sort of looking at how do we help you as a travel professional drive your top line. I think that's a great, uh, a great example, Joni, as well. I love that piece in there. I really do. I think it, personalizing it and really making it, making the education be more, you know, something that's more personal to yourself as you're going through it is, is a huge benefit. I, if you've not done that, folks on the call, you've not done the program and started to do these classes, I highly recommend it. They are really amazing. Great. Well, and we put them together with with travel professional, um, you know, advisory uh, consultation, and um, built you know built built them out to be really intuitive, and I think uh, you know high value uh, for our travel professional partners. Now, of course, there are actually some core modules. Um, we you know we have an upselling module, which actually is a video of of, of myself sitting at the beautiful Saint Regis, New York. Um, in Manhattan, teaching a few little tips on how to upsell, and of course, uh, as we all know, uh, you sell a higher, a higher product, a uh, deluxe room, a suite, you're going to take away more, more compensation, more commissions. And of course, I think one thing that's uh, important to many of our listeners, Joni, is so um, as well as education, you know, is there anything else in it for me? And yes, there is. Once the um, a travel professionals graduated from our first module, which is about loyalty and brands, so it teaches about our 10 world-class brands currently, and it teaches a little bit about how you grow, you know, as we call it, loyalty beyond reason with your client. Um, and one of the ways you do that is, you know, you match the right brand to the right client, and it's very, very simple to do. And once you do it and you get it right, you do earn loyalty beyond reason. If you put a client into a brand they don't or they won't enjoy, then you may not earn that loyalty beyond reason. So, it's, again, it's another tip that matching the right brand to the right client is very, very important. But the reward then is also it unlocks our Star Pro rates. And these are reserved exclusively for our graduates of our Pro Learning uh, first module, Loyalty in Brands. You have to book the uh, Star Pro rates again through the website, but they now offer, it's, uh, it's actually a floating rate, meaning it uh, floats a discount off whatever the daily rate is. Now, you, uh, some of our listeners may see prepaid rates, which are fully fenced and non-cancellable. Um, we will float a discount below those, but the one thing to remember on Star Pro rates is they can always be canceled right up until the day of arrival, actually. So fully flexible, but offering a good discount at all of our hotels um, around the world. And of course, we want our travel professionals to experience our properties because we truly do believe, Joni, that the best way for you all to sell is to experience, you know, experience a Sheraton now, experience a Westin, experience a St. Regis, um, and you'll be able to, you know, talk about those brands um, to your uh, to your customers um, far better. And just the last point I just want to get across, actually, Joni, about SPG Pro is, of course, make sure you're earning 
you know all of the the the, the points, whether it's through eligible uh, transient business for you know uh, vacation travel, whether it's for groups, etc. And remember that the program is built just like SPG. So the more points you earn, the more business you book, you can actually become an elite level member. You can actually become a gold member, a platinum member. And of course, the higher up you move in the tier, just like your client, then the rewards increase as well. So um, you know, remember that. And of course, uh, that you can earn points by booking any of Starwood's hotels globally. Um, you know, across our 1,300 hotels. Well, certainly my favorite brands for sure, without question. And I love the program. I'm sure there's a lot of other people too that have really benefited from not just not just the knowledge, but you know, some of the benefits of traveling and enjoying the properties as well. Right. Right. So, you know, your, your footprint uh, continues to grow. And, um, and I, I wanted to ask you another question about, um, luxury, if you don't mind. Um, your Starwood luxury portfolio includes some iconic brands without question. So can you give us some perspective on the overall luxury options through Starwood and how that's going, Chris? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. As I say, you know, um, Many of me know, know me uh, because I do lead the luxury sales globally for Starwood. And, you know, Starwood, I, I feel I am in a privileged position, actually, because today Starwood has the largest luxury portfolio in the world um, with our luxury brands, including St. Regis, the luxury collection and W Hotels worldwide. And of course, you know, as, I, as I've talked about, after the merger, we'll only solidify that leader in luxury position with, of course, Marriott's luxury brands of Ritz Carlton, Bulgari, in addition, um, also joining, uh, you know, with, with our three luxury brands as well. So exciting, uh, exciting times ahead. So St. Regis, you can see on the slide here, uh, a beautiful property, the uh, flagship in New York, the St. Regis, uh, New York on 55th, um, 100 years ago, 1904, the hotel opened, built by John Jacob Astor IV. And um, really a beautiful Beaux Arts masterpiece, as I say, located on um, on Fifth Avenue. And St. Regis still today stands for a symbol of uncompromising elegance and really bespoke service. Um, St. Regis, New York, obviously, is a you know, really combines that classic sophistication with now a modern sensibility. The brand is committed to delivering exceptional experiences to over 35 now of the best dresses around the world. I'm going to talk about our 35th hotel that we just opened actually last week in a second, the St. Regis Langkawi. But our hotels and resorts are settings for exceptional moments where signature rituals such as our Bloody Mary, uh, which actually was designed in the King Cole Bar of the St. Regis, New York, um, by a very astute, I would say, barman in the 1930s, uh, he added a little bit of vodka to a uh, drink uh, that was a tomato juice base and, of course, created what was then called the Red Snapper. Now we call it the Bloody Mary. And, of course, afternoon tea actually is a classic uh, in St. Regis and is served across all of our hotels. So we really try to cre keep that brand heritage um, and, and, you know, keep the legacy of the brand that guests will enjoy. Um, and as this brand, like our entire portfolio, is steadily growing, there's some great new hotels in the pipeline, about 20 properties actually. And just a few of our recent openings, the St. Regis Macau, pictured here. We opened this uh, property last December. It's in uh, Macau on the uh, Kotao Central Strip. Um, we also opened last year the St. Regis Mumbai. And uh, recently we've opened the St. Regis Dubai as well. Uh, coming up, we'll be opening the St. Regis Kuala Lumpur. And as I said last week, look at this stunning picture here. We opened the brand new St. Regis Langkawi Resort in Malaysia. Beautiful. Now this is nestled, isn't it gorgeous? I think mm -hmm. we all would probably like to pack our bags and go traveling mm -hmm. right now. Huh? So Absolutely. it's actually nestled on, a southern, on the southern tip of Langkawi. It's actually a first uh, UNESCO global geopark uh, designed in uh, Southeast Asia. Um, has a beautiful location, of course, looking out over the sparkling sandy beaches. You've got all those beautiful swaying palm trees. You've got that gorgeous turquoise Andaman Sea and the airport's 30 minutes away. So, you know, I think, again, a tip for our listeners, you know, look at where 
we're opening hotels and present those to your clients. You know, open up new opportunities, places they may never have been to before. Um, don't, you know, the Caribbean is a wonderful place, but for example, don't always sell the Caribbean. You know, open up their opportunity to travel um, aligned with some of our newer openings. And, you know, who doesn't love to go to a brand new resort such as the St. Regis Langkawi? And actually in September this year, here's a stunning picture. This is the St. Regis Maldives, actually, on its own private atoll, its own private island. Um, so we're very, very excited about uh, the St. Regis Maldives, which will open uh, in September this year. Okay, Chris, um, that's when my anniversary is, and that's on my bucket list. So um, <laughs> I'm hooking me up on that one, all right? Well, there's a few listeners today who actually I think would uh, would kindly offer their assistance to uh, to, book it, <laughs> to book that trip. Huh? Great. <laughs> So I'm just going to quickly move on and actually talk a little bit about the luxury collection also. Um, one of my favorite brands actually, we, you know, really designed for the global explorer. Um, you know, luxury collection hotels uh, offer a getaway to the world's most exciting and desirable destinations. You know, to, to us, they're, they're all about unlocking the destination. Each hotel and resort is a distinct and cherished expression of its location. Um, and the charms and treasures uh, that are in that uh, in that locale. This picture uh, that you're looking at here, and I know the words are over the slide, but this is a gorgeous property in the luxury collection. It's the Mystique in Santorini. So I was talking about the pro learning module of, uh, of Greece. This is one of the properties that you'd be uh, you'd be learning about. Really spectacular settings, impeccable service. And of course, though, the latest modern conveniences that all combine then to create a really uh, uniquely enriching experience. And today, the, the luxury collection is a glittering ensemble of more than 95 plus hotels around the world in 35 countries. All have, note, you know, they're noteworthy for either their history, their architecture, they could be modern buildings though, and are notable for art, furnishings, their amenities, but basically they're rich in culture, in the destination that they're, they're in. In 2015, actually, we had an amazing year for the luxury collection. We added seven, uh, seven gems, as we like to call them, to the portfolio, including um, in, in uh, Chicago, the Gwen, located uh, actually on a magnificent mile. It's uh, in a, a landmark skyscraper building, and um, the hotel actually is literally steps away uh, to major shopping on, um, on the magnificent mile there. Another property that I actually love because I just love history in um, San Antonio, the St. Anthony uh, completed its full restoration. This hotel was built in 1909, is three blocks from the Alamo and of course the, the Riverwalk area. And this multi-million dollar renovation preserved many of the original period details, um, but it's a beautiful property welcoming uh, people today. And then in Mexico City last year, we added the Las Alcabas, um, a gorgeous uh, property in the Palanca district of Mexico City, uh, very contemporary in its design, within walking distance of entertainment, dining and shopping, uh, but again, a, a fantastic property. Um, and we'll be opening properties uh, around the world in Nanjing. Uh, we opened in Kyoto last year, in Prague, the beautiful Augustine uh, in Prague joined the portfolio. We opened the Felicia in Porto Piccolo. And for those of you wondering where Porto Piccolo is, I just love saying that. It's about 40 minutes south of Venice. Uh, we also opened in Bratislava, in Bodrum, and um, in uh, Romana um, in the Middle East as well. This year, we've got some really exciting openings. And Joni, you wanted to go to the Maldives for uh, you know, an anniversary, you may want to go for a little weekend away to Napa Valley because we'll be opening the sister property to the Las Alcabas in Mexico City, actually in Napa Valley later this year, around November time. It's actually right in um, adjacent to the Beringer Wine Vineyard and um, it's going to be an exquisite new luxury collection property in the downtown St. Helena area. We'll also open this year um, the Pine Cliffs Ocean Suites uh, in the Algarve, Portugal. Uh, towards the back end of this year, we'll open Calneva, which is in uh, North Lake Tahoe. And some of you may recall, Calneva was actually owned by Frank Sinatra, and he would take all of his lap pack there and uh, have, I, I guess, uh, glamorous weekends away. 
uh, in September, uh, August, September this year, we'll open the Prince Gallery in Tokyo, a beautiful new luxury collection hotel. Um, we'll be opening other properties, of course, in, in China, and we'll also be opening, opening the uh, Sarasvati uh, a luxury collection resort in Bali. So then to W Hotels, um, really these properties are designed to help uh, your, you know, your customers, our guests, escape to where iconic design and contemporary luxury set the stage for exclusive and extraordinary experiences. And I, I said earlier about matching the right client to the right brand and driving loyalty beyond reason. You know, it's very easy to understand what brand your client would like. Just ask a few questions. You know, what music do they, do they like to li listen to? If they say Madonna, you know, note that down. Where do they like to buy their clothes? You know, if they say, uh, if it's a guy and he says he likes to buy his clothes from Paul Smith, that's a good English brand, by the way. I think those two questions, Madonna and Paul Smith, tell you they would love W Hotels. Of course, if they had said sort of uh, classical music and, uh, you know, some, some other type of, you know, uh, Taylor brand, then maybe St. Regis would be your brand. So it's easy to match the brand. And when, you, when, when, when a client of yours loves W, they will seek W out wherever they're going in the world. And last year we opened, for example, the W in Amsterdam, quite an amazing property. This is part of the interior here, uh, their the Duchess Tea Room. We also opened in Dubai, um, the W Dubai, Al Habtor City. And actually in May this year, we're gonna be opening in Mexico with a brand new property as well called the W Punta de Mita. So look out for that. Chris, can I ask year, you on that one? I'm just kind of curious because you know we, we live down in Punta Mita on the other side of the tracks from any of the W type properties. But I'm curious, where is that one going to be? Um, do you know the location? You say Punta Mita. Do you know what part of Punta Mita? Well, so actually, um, I don't know the physical address. I haven't okay. been down there. But what I'm told is our St. Regis is Punta Mita. Right. If you actually, if you actually went in the opposite direction, you would come to an, an area now called Punta de Mita. And okay. that is where the W is. Yeah. Perfect. So I Thank think you. A, I think probably 30 minutes apart, but I, I, I'm not sure if, there's a, if this is a new resort area, um, but uh, they may be trying to make things, the Mexicans may be making things a little bit more confusing for us. We just have to remember <laughs> to look for the D um, and turn left, not right, I guess. Huh? Yeah, so, there you uh, go. Wonderful, thanks, just curious. <laughs> not at all. And then um, a property I did want to sh uh, just highlight as well, which is a new opening this year, is the uh, W in Goha, uh, which is, of course, um, a destination island just off India. And again, it just goes back to what I was saying earlier. You know, some of you may say, well, I would never send anybody to Goa. But, you know, there are a lot of customers. A lot of your clients are looking to seek out what is new and what is next. And Goa is a gorgeous beautiful island um, off, off the Indian coast and uh, I would uh, you know highly uh, ju you know suggest you do a little bit of research close to home though we'll open the W Las Vegas um, in December and uh, we'll also open the W Tel Aviv also and you know we've got 26 journey 26 W signed um, that will open you know that over the next four four years or so including the W in Philadelphia in Bellevue Washington just outside of uh, Seattle um, in Brisbane, Australia, Marrakesh, Shanghai, Jakarta, Panama, Milan, Madrid, and the list goes on. And that's just as of today. So, you know, if we're talking again in six months, I'm sure with the, 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 the might and power of Marriott behind us, you know, W Hotels could really grow to be a very, very, very strong um, and powerful brand. So I think, you know, the, the, the key takeaway is we are the luxury, largest luxury um, operator in the world. Um, and, uh, you know, the brands are very, very differentiated across St. Regis Luxury Collection and W, and they present a different luxury experience for, you know, different types of clients. Oh, thank you for sharing all of that. That is great. Well, you're doing so many things. So I've got another question. Since you are always, and Starwood is always known for innovations. So we know Starwood started the bed wars with the amazing Weston Heavenly Bed. And so what kind of innovations do you think we as travel professionals in the community should expect maybe in the coming years? Yeah, it's a great question, actually. You know, and I think um, our Heavenly Bed did absolutely uh, demonstrate, I think, the innovation that uh, Starwood, um, Starwood had. And, of course, you know, I just spoke about W Hotels. You know, that was a brand we created ourselves. 
so was a loft, which I'll speak to in a second. I think all of these are testaments to the innovation that Starwood has, which is really now part of our DNA. And I think, again, you know, we're told by our friends at Marriott, actually, it, it, it makes us very attractive because some companies are not as innovative. Now, Westin, we started with the Westin Heavenly Bed, and of course, you know, we have the Westin Heavenly Shower, et cetera, et cetera. But we recently created a program called Move Well. So um, we partnered with New Balance uh, on a couple of really fantastic programs for runners. And of course, we know that, you know, well-being um, is very uh, important to, to, to numerous, numerous people. So at every one of our Westin hotels, your clients can now borrow new balance workout clothes and shoes for the duration of their stay. And I think that's fantastic because, you know, this means that you don't have to stuff them into suitcases. You know, um, often, you know, workout kit can be, uh, <laughs> can be maybe a little smelly if you've had a good workout. You don't want to put it back. You don't want to put it back into your suitcase with, your, with, with other clothes, etc. So, you know, what an innovative idea to partner with new balance. And actually, you know, guests can, of course, everything is um, clean. In fact, the socks, they just take with them. They, we don't want those returned. <laughs> everything is laundered, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, and our concierge is actually in the Western hotels, have running maps. We even have a, um, a run Western concierge who will go out in the mornings and, and run, with, uh, run with guests. So it's a great partnership. And I think simple, but shows the innovation of partnering with a, a great company like, like New Balance. And I mentioned a loft, actually. Um, and look at this little chappy here. He's a, a loft bottler. Um, so, in fact, as many of you know, a loft is part of our specialty select brands. It's a three-star brand. And um, we actually, I guess, mid last year, introduced our bottler into uh, some of our uh, lofts, actually. And, and, of course, you can tell he's a little robot here. Um, he will go directly to guest rooms. He'll get himself up, he or she, I should say. Huh? He'll get himself up in the elevator, call the guest room. So let's say they've asked for, you know, I don't know, an item, a Snickers bar or something. Basically, they just um, press the button and the little lids open up and there's a Snickers bar. And um, to say thank you, they don't tip him, of course. He wouldn't really be interested in the tip, but uh, they send a tweet. And, um, of course, tell, tell everybody uh, that they loved our little bottler. So this, this actually drove incredible uh, PR impressions for the Loft brand, but now actually is across many of our Loft properties. And I think it's just a great example where this is leveraging technology, but to enhance the guest experience. You know, no, nobody actually, I think, finds this... Um, uh, you know, a, a negative because it's cute, it's fun. A loft, if you know the brand, is very, very much a fun hotel. It's sort of like the little kid sister of W at a lower price point. But I think it just is a demonstration of how you can actually take innovation and and help put a smile on people's faces. You know, and, and uh, enhance a, a guest experience. Of course, there are a number of other innovations. Actually, I'd like to maybe suggest everybody um, checks out on our Sheraton website about our major league baseball partnership. Um, we've got great uh, you know, innovation at St. Regis um, with uh, a partnership with Bentley where we're designing actually um, suites, Bentley suites. And we of course have one in the St. Regis, New York, and we also have one now in the um, St. Regis Istanbul. And of course, every St. Regis has its fleet of Bentleys, which will take guests within a particular, uh, you know, location, etc. And I think I'll just go back, uh, actually, uh, Joni, and say SPG Pro, you know, we'll continue, for, for Star Wars, the journey that never ends, actually. We continue to really focus on our programs and look and listen to our customers and, you know, uh, continue to sort of develop those programs. But I think, you know, SPG Pro was really the first program that took our guest loyalty program took our travel industry program, which of course many of you know was called Starwood Pro, and we basically married those together uh, to create a best-in-class award-winning program and, um, you know, highly innovative, and nobody actually has been able to copy us yet. So um, I think a few examples, and yes, uh, we'll, uh, we'll definitely 
continue to drive our, our, our future um, and client and guest and customer experience with more innovation, Jeremy. Those are terrific um, ideas or things that you're doing. I can't even believe it. I love it. I, I love the running one that uh, gives you no excuse not to go out and do your run like you should be doing when you're on your vacation. <laughs> so true, or, huh? Yeah, it really, there's no excuse anymore. I have no more excuses. I love it. Um, so I'm going to ask you um, a different question here. How about how important do you believe it is for travel professionals to experience your brands as travelers and how can they make that happen in the most affordable way? I know you shared a little bit of information earlier about it, but maybe you can give us a, a bit more detail. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's a, it's a great question to ask me, Joni, because it actually allows me to reinforce, uh, you know, one of the points that I did say earlier. And I do think um, for us, you know, we truly do believe seeing a hotel, uh, you know, firsthand is the best way to then be able to articulate that, make a recommendation. You know, maybe you're traveling for your own vacation. Maybe you're just taking a weekend away to see friends, or maybe you're actually going to specifically see hotels and a brand that you've never stayed in before. So you can actually sell that brand better. And of course, I mentioned about pro learning and the uh, ability once you graduated from the first module to unlock those special star pro rates. Um, I really encourage everybody to make sure they do that um, and search on the, uh, you know, on our site. If you find that the rates aren't available, then use the calendar feature. Very, very intuitive. You'll see it color coded to when dates are available, you know, et cetera. But uh, we're really encouraging as many of our hotels to open up availability for our travel professionals. And again, it's a floating rate. It will be lower than anything else that you can, uh, you can find. Um, and, yeah, we really do sort of encourage our travel partners here to uh, enjoy a little bit of uh, R&R time, experience our brands. And um, maybe when you're at a hotel and you're experiencing it, write down five client names, five clients that you think would love that brand as well. And when you get back to your office, send them an email and tell them, I've just visited, just visited the St. Regis, I've just visited the W, I've just visited the Sheraton, and I'd love you to uh, try this brand as well, because. And just write a few of your, you know, the observations you made, and I think you'll see, again, a great way to try to drive more top line, um, more, more business your way. That's a terrific idea. Great personal selling there. You know, I could go on, you know, for hours here. I know you're an awfully busy man these days, but man, this has just been so interesting. I've just learned so much and it's always such a pleasure to talk to you. I want to thank oh, you so, so much. much. This is great, but folks don't go away yet. Um, this has been terrific information. I know all of you want to thank Chris as well, but I'm going to turn this over to um, Sandy now to come back on the line if she would. I think we may have time for a few questions and then I think we have our prizes that we're going to be giving away. So Chris, I'm going to drop off for a second and let Sandy take over. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thank, you. thank you so much, Joni and Chris. That was really interesting. Chris, those hotels just look fabulous. Every one of them that you showed looks gorgeous. Thank uh, you. We do have several questions, and we're not going to have time to get to all of them, but um, I'll ask a couple of them that were the most asked questions. And one of them, Chris, is uh, do you have any idea yet what the combined loyalty program will look like between Marriott and SPG? Oh, it's a great question, actually, and the short answer is no. And, you know, there's a lot, a lot being written about this because I think um, maybe we weren't surprised, but a lot of um, uh, members um, of both programs voiced opinions and reached out and sort of said, oh, my goodness, don't change my program, you know, et cetera. Um, many of your clients maybe were, were doing that. Huh? Um, what we do know is that the two programs will run parallel right through to the end of 2017, actually. So I think, you know, both companies are committed not to just make change for change's sake. We must make changes and create the best program that will be maintained as the best program in the future. I think what we will see are some opportunities for SPG members or Marriott Reward members to have additional benefits you know, that maybe if you're an SPG member, there's a, some, some level of additional benefit um, at a Marriott hotel or, or whatever, et cetera. You know, we always have to remember integration of companies will take time when, when the foundation of a program such as SPG is built on technology as well, because we're all working on different systems, et cetera. And that really dictates the timeline. But I think the point I said, Sandy, we, we don't want to just make change for change's sake. Uh, the programs will run parallel. I can guarantee you that, that that work will start immediately, but we will make the right decisions. We will seek uh, member input 
um, et cetera, um, before changes are made. And, and that's ditto for SPG Pro, which I know Marriott are very excited about, actually, and um, love what we do um, with that program. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, that's a great answer. Um, well, that was a question that many people ask. We have time for one more question, and this is a question that only one person asked, but I think it's an interesting question. Does Starwood have a uh, presence in Bhutan, in the Himalayas? Actually, we do. Um, we have a Limeridian property uh, there, um, and... Um, I, it's a beautiful property, just opened last year, so I'd encourage just to, you know to look at our website, and um, you'll see uh, you'll see you know obviously our worldwide global directory, and and um, here we are. Check out the hotel. Okay, excellent. Um, if I didn't get to your question, and most of these questions I didn't have time for, or if you think of something else, Chris has very generously provided us his email address. So uh, he's welcoming your emails with any additional question. Uh, and his email is chris.austin, that's C-H-R-I-S dot Austin, A-U-S-T-I-N, at Starwood Hotels. Dot com. Chris dot Austin at StarwoodHotels.com. And Chris, thank you so much for um, for giving out your email address. Um, no, you're very welcome. Chris has also uh, very generously provided some gifts for us. So uh, let's get to the prizes, and this is how it's going to work. We have some questions, and I'm going to ask one question at a time. And the first correct answer I see coming across my screen, I will announce, and that will be the um, prize winner. So our first question, the gift is a $50 gift card, and Chris and his team will get in touch with you if you're the winner. Uh, so this question is for a $50 gift card, and the question is, what are Starwood's exclusive travel professional rates called? What are Starwood's exclusive travel professional rates called. Okay, and we have a winner. <laughs> that, that was pretty easy. Our winner is Lois Barber. Lois Barber is a winner of one of the $50 gift cards. Congratulations, Lois. You answered very quickly and very correctly. <laughs> Our next question is also for a $50 gift card. First answer, correct answer I see on my screen is the winner. Our next question is, the combined Marriott Starwood portfolio will represent how many brands and how many rooms? How many brands and how many rooms will be represented? And you need to answer both parts of the question. Okay, we have an answer, and this was not so easy. Uh, the answer is 1. million rooms across 30 brands, and the first correct answer I saw on my screen was from Kevin Kelker. So congratulations, Kevin Kelker. You are the winner of a $50 gift card. And again, Chris and his team will be in touch with you about that. Our final prize is the grand prize. This is a $100 gift card. And here is the question, and I need the complete answer to the question. The question is this, what are the three luxury brands of the Starwood portfolio? What are the three luxury brands of the Starwood portfolio? Okay, we have a, a winner. But Chris, everyone was paying very close attention. This is Love really that. wonderful. Um, we Actually, we have a lot of uh, uh, correct winners. Uh, and the first one that I saw across my screen was from Debbie Gorman. Correct answer is the St. Regis, the Luxury Collection, and the W Hotels. And Debbie Gorman, congratulations. You are the winner of the $100 gift card. Well, this has been such an informative and wonderful conversation between Joni Og and Chris Austin. I really want to thank both of you. Our guest today has been Starwood Hotels and Resorts. And our guest speaker has been Chris Austin, Vice President, Global Leisure, Luxury, and TMC Sales. Chris, thank you so much for being with us today. This was an incredibly informative webinar. Thank you. 
Scott, thank, thank you, Chris. Andy, and thank you, Joni, and thank you to all of our listeners. Remember, until we close in the uh, middle of the year, we're still competitors, Marriott and Starwood. And so uh, currently, we would love your business. Uh, give it all to Starwood at the moment and make us shine, yes? Yeah? So um, <laughs> have a great afternoon, everybody. And I want to thank all of you also for being here today. We learned a lot, and uh, congratulations again to our prize winners. You will be hearing from Chris Austin and his team, uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. See you next time. Bye, everybody.